Okay, full disclosure. I am in awe of Gaelic footballers. Their dedication is off the charts. Their perseverance is a thing of legend. They're the beating hearts of communities up and down the country. Nothing symbolizes this commitment more than a GAA player driving alone to a big match or a training session. So I'm going to join them on it to find out why these players can't quit. This is the drive. Up in the sport, the Aran Islands. It's me, the fella called Sean. We're off. We're off. <laughs> the Aran Islands. This is where you grew up. It is. And is the football big in the Aran Islands? It would be big, yeah. I suppose it would be tight knit because there's only so few of us, I suppose. And how many other clubs would be on Inishmore? No, just the one club between the three islands. Really? Yeah. In terms of that, I think we're pretty unique. And then, you know, for a game at one o'clock, you're leaving it, getting up yeah. at half seven for the Corp State boat or the, the plane or. So like you're, it's, it's, it's the whole day gone pretty much, you know? Yeah. And especially if there's a few lads who have businesses on the islands, like, and you know, they're giving up their whole day just to come and represent yeah. you know, the three yeah. islands, which is great. Like, it, just, it just shows how, how proud and how, you yeah. know, how much it means to them as well. Yeah. Like. Am I correct in thinking that you're actually the first Aran Islander to represent senior Galway team? Yeah, so senior to county, funnily yeah. enough. And does that bring added pressure, do you think? Well, not really. Once you come no. back to the island, you're the same old. Yeah. You're the same old, same old, you know? Picked up by Galway, by their fullback, Sean Mulcair. You come back to the island and you appreciate what's around you then, yeah. as in, like, in terms of support, um, that tight knit kind of community where everyone knows everyone, you know? It reminds me of an island I worked on uh, for a while, many years ago. Yeah. <laughs> can't think of the name of it now. No, no, I, I, can't, I can't remember. It's too long ago. Too, too long, long ago. Here, go handy. We're running into awful traffic here. <laughs> your bikes, your horses. Yeah. And this is, this this is where I work then, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. hard to believe. Like, you are an elite athlete by any standards, and yet you work in a shop. I like, know. People outside this country wouldn't believe that. I know. Well, you have to, you have to earn a few as well, you know? Yeah. Like, it is unique oh. to Ireland. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's what separates us because they're actually doing it for the love of it. Just tell me, what is the commitment? What is the commitment? In terms of training. That can involve getting the ferry or the plane at five or four o'clock in the evening. Tuesday, going out training, staying overnight to come back in then on the early flight or the first thing in the morning on the ferry to go to work or to gig that night. And it's Saturday. not just getting the ferry or the plane, it's still another 40 minutes into Galway to train. Yeah, it is, yeah. And 40 minutes back. 40 minutes it? back, yeah, if you put it that way, yeah. So it's a huge yeah. time commitment. Huge time, I know, yeah. You're not missing out on an awful lot. I suppose I am, but you do it because you love it and yeah. I suppose I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love it, so. Hurry, Sean, the plane's leaving. Run, run. It's late for training, come on. Sean, who's picking us up? Keen Brelloch, he's one of our strength and conditioning guys. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Hey, lads. How are you doing? Keen. All good. Nice you. How are you? Things. Nice to meet you. Very good. Very good. Thanks for having us. So we better hit the road, I suppose. Let's go. Yeah, it's great to get the free lift. I <laughs> never said it was free now. Now and again, now and again. <laughs> he, does, he has to buy lunch every now and then, so he does like our, our coffee. coffee on the way. The yeah. And how do you feel as a Galway man having the Islanders now <laughs> for, for the Galway <laughs> County team? I um, still haven't decided really. I think they should have their own team or something and stay with it. I know. And when you, when you think about it, like coming from an island, like it's a massive achievement. Like some might say he's at a disadvantage, you know, yeah. but he's, he's just proven that wrong. You know, he puts in the work as much as anyone else. So take us back, Sean, to the actual, like the, the serious injury. When did that happen? So it had happened in mid-January. So it was a Sigerson game. I was actually only coming back from a, a growing strain. So the uh, next day, of course, um, that injury, so I broke my kneecap. So um, you, you sorry, you broke me. Take me through that again. You broke your kneecap. Broke my kneecap. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It doesn't it's sound a pleasing of, at all, does it? It's very uncommon now. In fairness, um, shattered. Shattered. Yeah. So it's very, it was very um, looked down and uh, yeah. <laughs> but this way, my kneecap wasn't where my kneecap was meant to be. Anyway, yeah. so 
And I suppose that's part and parcel of the sport, I'm afraid. And what's the first thought that goes through your head when something like that happens? Oh, sugar. I'm going to have to probably... Was sugar the word you asked? Sugar it was, it was. <laughs> <laughs> to keep it sweet. It never curses or anything never, like that. Never. No, it's amazing. <laughs> It is very tough, it is. I wasn't able to do anything, like, you know, in terms of I couldn't, like, get up, I couldn't, like, properly. It took me 20 minutes to get up off the couch. Generally, Sean, you won't be involved at any stage this year, but, like, does that make, does that spur you on, like, to, oh, to want yeah. to be involved next so, year and to go even further? Exactly, yeah. It's a lot easier being <laughs> involved on the pitch than, than watching on from the line, you know. And uh, but at least, thankfully, I, I got to do, like, you know, the Muirish case, so... So you're still you're still helping the lads and you know, shouting them out from a very very close distance, like yeah. and even being involved in the dressing room and uh, just focus on yeah. whatever time I do get back that I'm better, sharper, yeah. more powerful than that, you know. Mentally coming over an injury like this is probably the the toughest aspect of it, and I must say, like Sean has dealt with it quite well. Where does that come from? Is that something that's bred into people? Is it something that's in uh, them I think from an early age? Yeah, I think to a certain degree. It, we, we can coach it but at the end of the day it has to come from within if we were to put a percentage on it I'd say 90% has to come from within and you have to have it for, for confidence and determination and all that so we're getting close now this is it so it is well I'm going to leave you here lads yeah you're not going to join us no I, I just don't want to get in your way <laughs> <laughs> maybe or next time maybe next time them. thanks for joining us lovely You seem to be like a very single-minded individual. Well... Were you a stubborn child? Ah, my mum and my, my family would probably tell you yes. 